Welcome back. We have Dr. Yi Elaine Wang here on behalf of Harvard Eye Associates, and we're going to talk about a single surgery for two different situations. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's always back to come back here. Now I can say that. It's <laughs> my uh, more than the first time being here. So yeah, my pleasure. And, and you know, we, we were talking a little bit beforehand about how, you know, giving presentations probably helps you in all different ways. And, and you obviously have been studying this and doing surgeries and doing all of this for a long time. Right. So it makes sense for you to come back. So we're, we're glad you're here. We'll just, we'll just call it the, you know, Yee Elaine Wang Show. Oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about we're, uh, glaucoma and cataract. You can do one surgery for both. So, so let's, we have some slides and we'll just run through those and you can tell me what, what each one is showing us. Yeah, absolutely. So in the, in the old days, I, last time when I was here, we talked about what glaucoma is and, and how we can um, tackle people's vision and focus on the quality of the vision um, uh, when we do cataract surgery for patients with glaucoma. But in fact, thanks to the modern development of a lot of new technologies in treating glaucoma, not curing, but managing glaucoma, it made it available and possible for us to do surgery at the same time of mm. your cataract surgery um, to treat both problems at the same time. Okay. Just to refresh our memory, cataracts and glaucoma are two very separate issues. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get confused when I ask them, do you have family history of glaucoma or cataract? They sometimes get confused. But cataract is something everybody eventually will get. So no one can get really, you know, luck, let, lucked out from, uh, you know, having cataract because that's majority um, UV-induced damage mm -hmm. to a natural lens that we have in our eye. Mm -hmm. But glaucoma is not like that. Not everybody will get glaucoma. Only certain people will get glaucoma, mm -hmm. um, those with high risk factors. For example, family history. It does run in the family if you have right. genetic, genetic background background to get glaucoma, you're more likely to get it throughout your entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. Not to say you'll definitely get it, but your risk is just higher. Right. Injuries right. to your eyes before, if you used a lot of steroid creams or eye drops in the form of treatment for some eye conditions, oh, okay. you may have higher pressure and eventually develop glaucoma. Mm -hmm. So there are many things that plays a role in this, um, but glaucoma is something that selects a certain group of people. And the other main difference between cataract and glaucoma is cataract is something that's reversible. Once you have the cataract surgery, most of your friends or family who's had it will tell you, oh, I see like a 20-year-old again. Mm -hmm. But glaucoma is not the same. Glaucoma is not something we can cure completely, and it doesn't really tell you all the symptoms it can bring you. Right. Um, cataract, sometimes people complain, you know, I'm seeing really hazy. People say, I feel like there's a fog in front mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing underwater. Colors are a little different. Things are becoming more warmer toned versus being vibrant. You know, your brilliant color you yeah. used to see. Right. Those are typical symptoms of cataracts. Mm -hmm. But glaucoma doesn't. Glaucoma steals away your peripheral vision. Ah. So people can end up having tunnel vision like that. Got it. I would encourage all, all of our audience to actually try this. Put your hand up and see how much vision you can just block towards yeah. the side and just let go of it. You feel the world suddenly just expanded out. Mm -hmm. um, we use a lot of our peripheral vision when we're driving. We never really turn our head deliberately to look for cars in other lanes next to us, <laughs> but you kind of notice they're going by. Right. Um, that's the peripheral vision. Ah, okay. People can lose up to 70 to 90% of the peripheral vision without even knowing they have that. Ah. So that's the difference between glaucoma and cataract. I so see. in the old days, glaucoma is really tough to treat. It's either drops or more drops or three more different drops, people mm -hmm. can end up being mm -hmm. taking five different drops a day to treat that, to treat, to manage their eye pressure. Mm -hmm. And then if that doesn't work, we go to the really uh, more invasive heart surgeries in order to drop the pressure. Yeah. We don't really have anything in between. Okay. People always wonder, can I do maybe something like a LASIK surgery? It's a surgery, but it's such a mild surgery. Is there any other laser treatment or something more like a minor procedure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the past 10 to 15 years, that had really become available, which made this whole spectrum of glaucoma treatment, starting from the eye drop laser to the traditional incisional surgery, mm -hmm. there are things in between, and that really focuses 
on this opportunity of your cataract surgery time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these group of procedures I call minimally invasive, or some people say, and I actually prefer the term of micro -inva uh, invasive. So it's okay. a small incision that we make in the eye at the time of cataract surgery. We're making a wound to go in the eye to take out the cataract anyway, and we're taking advantage of this one single wound that we've already created mm. to tackle the cataract mm -hmm. to add on literally a five, 10 minute procedure to this already pretty short cataract surgery okay. to make it a combined no more than 30 minute procedure mm. to tackle both the cataract and the glaucoma at the same time. Now that is, of course, if it shows up at the same time, right? Exactly. I mean, could cataract, I suppose one or the other could come first. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. People can have cataract and later on develop glaucoma. People can have glaucoma when they were younger and then eventually when they get older develop cataract. If they're coexisting at the mm -hmm. same time, concurrent, mm -hmm. then yes, we take the opportunity of the cataract surgery to do that. And these, um, devices that's showing on this slides right here where you see the name where it says eye stent or eye stent inject mm. or hydrus. Mm -hmm. Those are the main three little stents that we oh. put in the eye for the purpose of lowering eye pressure. I see. We're basically looking at the bottom of the slide as a cross section of the eye. You're mm -hmm. looking at the eye sideways and in a single plane. See where the little, little thumbnail thing that's pushed into the eye mm -hmm. or the little curvature, little hydrus implant. Um, inserted into the canal. The idea of these glaucoma stents is very similar to the idea of heart stents. We've sure. all had friends or family with heart stents when their heart vessels are narrowed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When the vessels are narrow, blood do not, do not follow through it smoothly. So if you put glaucoma stent in the eye, the idea is the same. You open up your tubing for plumbing, mm -hmm. allowing more flow of the waste fluid from the inside mm -hmm. to the outside mm -hmm. of the eye. Mm -hmm. This is completely independent of your tear system. It's not part of the yeah. tear fluid right. that we think of. Sure. It's a separate um, system of fluid. But same idea, if your tubing is too narrow, nothing's going through, things mm -hmm. get backed up, mm -hmm. high pressure, glaucoma. But if you put stents in there, that helps to tent up the space and allow more efficient flow. Now how long do the stents last? Yeah, great question. I always tell people, because these glaucoma surgeries are meant to be minimally invasive, their benefit are not supposed to be a slam dunk cure to glaucoma mm -hmm. anyway. I've seen a lot of these stents work up to five, 10 years, sometimes even longer. Okay. But is it going to be permanent if you had it done in your 40 years? Is it gonna last till you are 95? I doubt it. Eventually mm -hmm. you may still need more interventions on top of that, mm -hmm. but at least five, 10 years, you can potentially go with much less eye drop than you initially intended okay. to uh, or needed to have. Or some people, if they're in the milder situation for glaucoma, mm -hmm. they may end up not having to use drops at all. Okay. okay. And to your other point earlier, if you developed glaucoma later on in life, say you had your cataract surgery removed, you're seeing a whole lot better in your 70s, and somehow when you turn 80, people tell you, hey, now you have glaucoma. Mm -hmm. That's very common, because glaucoma is an aging problem. So at the way you get older, your risk gets higher. How, so can we still do some of the minimally invasive for MIGS glaucoma stents? I don't have a cataract anymore. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. There is a small subset of the minimally invasive procedures that can be done as a standalone procedure. Ah. So these are procedures using catheters or blades to actually scrape away any scar. I know that word sounds, it sounds a awful, little, but, yeah. but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tiny little miniature blade. Yeah. It's not even sharp. It doesn't cause any bleeding, but it literally scrapes away any scar tissue or clogging within the tube. And we also use the material to flush it away very much like you have a plumbing work done for yeah. your house, yeah. and that allows, again, same, more efficient flow of the fluid. Well, you know, it's just amazing as we, as we progress with technology, things are getting easier and easier, and also better for the patient because then, A, they're not as frightened, absolutely. and B, their recovery is better. You're absolutely right. You're right, right on point. Recovery is very important, especially for our older population. <laughs> People are always taking care of themselves for their other medical conditions right. or their loved ones for, for their um, medical conditions. So mm -hmm. you can't afford to take months and months off 
from doing nothing at the house. Mm -hmm. Minimally invasive glaucoma procedures allows you to recover almost as fast as your cataract surgery alone. And you don't have to really take extended period of time away from your work, your family, or taking care of yourself or others. Mm -hmm. So that really made um, recovery and just taking care of the disease a lot easier. Fantastic, great information. Thank you so much. No problem, it's my pleasure to I'm be sure here. I'm sure we'll see you again. I, I hope to come back soon. <laughs> All right. If you want more information about this remarkable surgery that can be done for both uh, glaucoma and cataract, contact Harvard Eye at harvardeye.com or call them at 949-951-2020. We'll be right back.